Masks in schools. It's one of the top issues on the minds of families across North Carolina. And here to discuss the topic is Dr. Terry Stoops. He is director of the Center for Effective Education at the John Locke Foundation. And Terry, uh, not a lot of clear guidance about masks in schools from the state level. Governor Roy Cooper has put forward strong recommendations, but he's really leaving the decisions up to the local level. Yeah, and this is really... Uh, one of the positive developments is that there was widespread expectation that uh, Governor Cooper would enforce a statewide mask mandate. And in fact, members of the North Carolina Association of Educators were urging the governor to go that route, uh, believing that the governor has the authority to do so and that doing so would signal his support for teachers and the safety of teachers. And so there was some thinking that the governor would enforce a statewide mandate, but he did the right thing by leaving it up to local districts and allowing them to determine what local circumstances play a role in making a decision about whether to enforce a face covering policy on uh, schools that would include the teachers and the students, those that are vaccinated and not vaccinated. So uh, they were able to to make that decision. And we see that many districts are going through the process right now through school board meetings uh, in deciding what they're going to do for the next school year, which is just a couple weeks away. You've been monitoring these debates across the state. What has struck you as most interesting about uh, the discussion as it's moving forward? Well, the political angle is the most most discussed part of it in that uh, those counties that voted for Donald Trump are most likely to also vote for mask optional. Uh, Those that voted for President Biden uh, were those that are mask mandatory. So we're seeing a political split split between those counties. And, you know, I, I think that there, there is a correlation there, um, and whether you know those counties are more likely to have a certain ideology with regard to freedom and how that ideology plays in to their mask mandate is is certainly up for debate. But um, they're they're really turning, uh, and by they I'm talking about the media is turning this into just another area of American life that is polarized, and another area of American life where we're going to fight about the left and the right, and the desire to have masks or not masks being a Trump versus Biden rehash. What do we know about the impact of masks on kids in schools? Well, it's uh, it's interesting because the research tells us that masks uh, have some benefits, but there's also some costs associated with using masks. They're not always uh, the best choice for certain children in certain circumstances. Uh, and, and we know we can speculate that they probably had something to do with mitigating the spread of COVID-19, although the jury's still out on that. And one of the reports that a lot of school boards are relying on to enforce a mask mandate is by the ABC Collaborative of Duke University. And this is a report that basically said North Carolina was successful at mitigating the spread of COVID-19 in schools. And the reason why is because of masks. And as we discussed earlier, uh, they, they kind of inferred that there were ways of testing that thesis and they failed to do so. They just speculated that masks were the reason why schools were able to mitigate COVID-19 and it didn't have anything to do with social distancing or other measures. So um, that is, that's certainly one area that I think we need to take seriously is what does the research say about mitigating COVID-19? But we also have to consider Uh, that there are studies that tell us that masking kids, masking young children, isn't always a good uh, uh, policy to maintain. Um, We know that masks, for example, increase the heart rate uh, because it makes it more difficult to breathe in and out. We know that there are um, other uh, detriments that come with masks. And my colleague uh, John Sanders has done a wonderful job on the Locker Room blog of detailing what some of those... uh, Um, uh, issues are with the use of masks. So uh, I I think that needs to be part of the discussion, uh, that it's not just a matter of parental preference. 
for masking or not masking, but there are benefits and costs to using masks, and both must be considered before we decide to enforce any sort of mask mandate. Speaking of parental preference, we know that uh, whether there's going to be some sort of mandate or not with masks could have an impact on whether parents want their kids in a traditional district school or some other option. How do you see this playing out? I think that the mask mandates in our largest counties, our urban counties, especially Wake and Mecklenburg, where the tremendous number of options available are going to push parents out of the district system and into charter schools, which, like districts, have the ability to choose whether they are masked or not. Private schools, same situation. They are able to choose whether they mask or not. And homeschooling, which has grown by an enormous number over the last year and uh, will probably continue to grow. I think school choice is absolutely going to be an issue here because parents have strong feeling about masks. They have strong feelings about the educational environment in which they send their children to and if they feel that that environment is detrimental in any way and and they see masks as a detriment then they will seek out alternatives Uh, the real question will be are charter schools and private schools going to have the seats available to accommodate the number of parents that want to send their child to an alternative to a district that has a mask mandate alternatively There are parents that I'm sure are in mask optional districts that want to seek out a choice in a school that has mask requirements. And they absolutely should have the ability to do that. And I think you'll see in some of the more than three dozen school districts that have made masks optional that a segment of the parent parental uh, group there is going to look for options that have mask mandatory policies and by all means that they should do so. As the debate about masks in schools continues, we know that one person who will be monitoring the issue very closely and writing about it for the John Locke Foundation is Dr. Terry Stoops. He is director of the Center for Effective Education at the John Locke Foundation. Thanks so much. Thank you.